far field approximation. Let me explain this concept to you by making use of an example. Suppose we have two charges, let's say Q1 and a charge Q2 and imagine they are separated by a distance A. And I am interested in calculating an uh, electric field at some point P which is at a distance R. By now you should know how to calculate that electric field. It's a one dimensional case, very easy to calculate that. So this one is going to produce an electric field this way if it's a positive charge or this way if it's a negative charge. Let's assume for now that the both charges are positive. Then I would get an electric field E1 and I would get an electric field due to this guy over here E2. Then the electric field, the total electric field at point B would be the electric field E1 which is going to be K Q1 divided by the distance A plus R, the whole squared plus I'm assuming both are positive, K Q2 divided by, divided by R squared. Now here is the question, what if we assume that point P is far away from this charge configuration? I keep it far away. In other words, what if R is much bigger than A? Under this assumption, we can modify this formula and we can do some approximation. That's the whole idea behind far field approximation. We take a point which we are interested in far away from our charge configuration. When I do that, notice over here I can make a small assumption. I can say A plus R is almost equal to R. You can think of Excuse me. You can think of R as say 100 meters and you can think of A as maybe a meter or maybe a centimeter. Yeah, that's, that's good. 100 meters and a centimeter. 100 meters plus 1 centimeter is roughly 100 meters. Under that assumption, we can now calculate what EP would be. So this is far away. You would now get K Q1 divided by R square plus K Q2 divided by R square or in other words you just get K Q1 plus Q2 divided by R square. What this is telling you is that when you go far away the electric field would have the same form as if there weren't two charges separated by a distance A but there were just one charge having the total charge Q1 plus Q2. So what I'm trying to tell you is, as long as the point P is far away, I can assume that this configuration is equivalent to having one single charge Q1 plus Q2 and assuming that I'm calculating the electric field at a distance R, provided we work under this condition. And this doesn't have to be on the axis. I can go off axis. I could ask you to calculate the electric field here. Or I could ask you to calculate the electric field over here. And you would still see this formula would work. I will show you how. Suppose we had the same two charges. Let's consider our second case. Q1 and Q2. And the distance of separation is A. And assume now we go far away at some point P. Notice I want you to assume that point P is far away but because of the limitations of the board I don't want to put that point P somewhere down there. I can't do that. So just assume it's, it's not proportionately drawn but you have to imagine it's far away. If I did that, if we call this as distance R2 and if we call this as distance R1 we could now say that there's going to be an electric field in this direction E2 and there's going to be an electric field in this direction E1 we might have to do a vector sum, but we don't have to, under the assumption that point P is far away from these two charges. If P is far away, then we can approximately say R1 is almost same as R2 is almost equal to R. 
that works out and both the distances are almost same to each other you can pretty much see that and also if the point P was far away these two lines would almost be parallel to each other in other words this angle between them or this angle theta would be almost zero notice under these two conditions E1 and E2 would get the same form kq1 by r square plus kq2 by r square and therefore the total electric field will now again be kq1 q2 divided by r square so let's generalize this in general if you have a couple of charges okay q1 and q2 and you go far away the electric field can just be k summation of q divided by r square and now there's nothing special about two charges we can have three charges or four charges or n number of charges so we could have something like this we could have a cluster okay let me do it. we could have a cluster say q1 and q2 and q3 and q4 and whatnot that could be thousands of charges and each, each separation let's say a1 and the separation could be a2 and and so on but suppose we went far away from this charge configuration says that this distance from this configuration is roughly r and we make the assumption r is much bigger than a1 or a2 or a3 then we can say the electric field at point p is just k into summation of q divided by r square provided we are going far away and that's beautiful because you just have one formula for electric field you don't have to look at different different formula every case looks like it's a point charge and that makes sense when you go far away from a bunch of charges when you look from there all the bunch of charges look like one single point charge you can forget about those internal distances and everything and this tells us that the field far away can only have two configurations either radially outwards if sigma q turns out to be a positive number or radially inwards if sigma q turns out to be a negative number that's it that's amazing when you think about it so let's summarize the result okay field far away we can summarize now due to any charge configuration due to any number of charges whatever could be the distances between them it doesn't matter it depends okay what we can say is we can say one thing is always radial either inwards or outwards that depends upon the sign of sigma q second thing we can say always independent of the distances between them independent independent of the distance between charges in our example a1 a2 a3 doesn't matter and what does it depend on it only depends on only depends on sigma q so if I have a cluster of charge over here somewhere and I say hey what's the electric field here you're not going to ask me what is the individual charge you're not going to ask me what is the distance between them all you're going to ask me tell me the total charge that's all that matters nothing else this also means if I went very close to that cluster of charges and I move those charges around the electric field far away does not get affected I can move these charges I can just keep moving them and the electric far away is absolutely not affected by this at all all right and I think this is pretty obvious when we when you go into gravity we do the same thing for gravity if I ask you what is the gravitational field due to a galaxy far away light years far away don't have to go light years ah, okay fine light years far away if you go then you can you don't have to think of that galaxy is made up of so many stars and it's planar structure and everything the field becomes very complicated close to the close to the galaxy but far away the field can be approximated due to just a point mass and so this is amazing because you can you can use this for for any charge configuration except for one special charge configuration for one special case and you don't get that in gravity 
only in electricity for one special case this whole thing fails we will see which that case is i think you can guess that we will see that case in the next video stay tuned <laughs>